welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today uh, we're doing another after action report. Um, this is obviously, as you can see, the African Campaign Designer Signature Edition. Now, this is actually Designer Signature Second Edition. Uh, I think the biggest difference between this and the original DSE is that this has mounted maps. I don't know if there's any other major differences. Um, but I know that was one of the big things that was kind of called out. Uh, but you, you can see it, this is North Africa. Uh, this is, it's also a game where this is quite a, a long, thin map. Um, and they've obviously taken up all of this space of the med with all these different tracks and boxes. So they've made really good use of it. Uh, but this is the setup uh, of the game. Uh, so we've got a uh, couple, you know, really only a few... Uh, British Commonwealth units here, bunch of Italians, uh, no Germans are on the board yet, uh, the Germans don't come in uh, for another month or so, uh, maybe even longer than that, maybe, maybe, maybe three months. So it, it initially what's going to happen is I think we're going to get a, a, a big push here that's going to charge through a lot of this uh, and then kind of push on to Benghazi and then the Germans are going to start landing, start pushing us back and you know how these games go back and forth. Uh, with the flip-flopping of uh, movements and uh, strategic position. Uh, in this one, the, uh, the Axis precarious supply um, situation is done with this Axis fuel track. Uh, basically, if they want to move more than uh, like two spaces, they have to use fuel to be able to do so. Uh, and so it, it can, they have to have these good fuel to be able to spend it and to get fuel, there is this chart that they're going to be rolling on depending on which segment. So this is segment A, B, C, D, and E, and F. Depending on that segment, they're going to roll on this table to see how much fuel they get for a specific turn. Uh, sometimes you'll get a glut of fuel, so you'll be able to do a lot. Other times you won't get very much. Um, and that's kind of scaled, so you, and that's going to help do the ebbs and flows. But as you can see, <laughs> Lots of open terrain, can't do a whole lot of stuff here. Uh, we've got all these plateaus which are up these ridges and there's rules dictating those movements. Uh, and there are ports uh, which can be used to bring in reinforcements, uh, and, well, mostly replacements, but uh, they can be used to place units out. There's obviously strategic movement uh, to move across a, a large portion of the map. Uh, and the game has 50 game turns. And uh, this is uh, an I go, you go, so we're gonna have uh, an, an allied turn, then an axis turn. Then we're going to move to turn two, and then we're going to go back and forth like that. I think what we're going to do, uh, uh, so that it isn't quite so choppy, is that we're going to do, because um, there's two turns per month. So I think I'm going to do uh, kind of a, an, an update every month, which will have constituted two full game turns. So each side will have activated twice. I just think <laughs> if we go the full time, we'll end up with 25 kind of segments of this, uh, uh, of this AAR. <laughs> it's just a bit more manageable than 50, where I don't know how much back and forth is gonna be happening there. So um, I haven't uh, played this game before, uh, but the rules were uh, very short and very concise. Um, We've got a CRT, terrain effects, and some replacement charts, but almost all of that's printed on the map as well so that you'll be able to see that. Um, I'm playing with a couple of the optional rules. So I'm playing with the optional initiative. So every time we start a new turn, apart from turn one, we're going to roll a die to see who goes first. Um, and then we're going to play with the optional tactical advantage. Um, I think the, uh, the allies start with this and they can spend it to re-roll one die, either one of their own or one of the opponents. And um, if they do, they put it on the turn track on the opposite side for the next player to get back next turn. Um, I think, oh, and we're gonna do the optional rule of um, if you have to retreat uh, into like an enemy, into an enemy zone of control, you're gonna take a step loss rather than just being eliminated outright. Cause I think that might be too punitive in a, in a little game like this that's not supposed to be quite so intense. But the counter density is very low, as you can see. There's a lot of reinforcements on the board, but you know, this was a single sheet of counters and these counters are much larger than like the smaller ones you get in something like uh, uh, the Dark Valley, for example. 
Uh, but I think, generally speaking, that is uh, the major setup. Oh, uh, the game has this uh, these tray of mine markers up here. Um, those will be placed out with some rules. We'll kind of talk about that as we go. Um, there's some air markers, which will get assigned based on uh, the turn track. Um, I'll be using custom dice, because I'm a cool person like that. And then I do have these... Um, uh, tiddlywinks, which we're going to use. There aren't any control markers in this game. Uh, it should be generally very obvious who last controlled something based on where the front line is. But, uh, you know, if if a place is vacated, uh, it will be controlled by that side, even though there's not a unit in there. And I just thought, just to, just to help me make sure I don't make any mistakes, um, that's, that's going to be part of that. So... Generally speaking, I think that is um, the kind of the intro and the setup. What I'll do is I'll play uh, turn one and turn two, and then come back and we'll kind of uh, show you where things are at. So here's the end of December 1940. Uh, so this is the end of turn two, We've just done two full game turns. And uh, the Allies have the first, and the initiative in the very first turn, and after that we roll randomly to see who goes first, but basically the Allies took a turn, knocked out a couple of Italian units, uh, and then the the, uh, the Italians had a turn where they just kind of <laughs> consolidated some of their forces in defensive positions up in, in and around some terrain here, uh, and then they also then got the old double turn because they rolled and got the uh, initiative for turn two, where they brought in a couple of reinforcements over here, um, Finished trucking up a couple guys here to hold Benghazi, which is a fortress. Uh, you can see it's got this red outline. It's got defensive uh, posture there, um, and 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 ran up a couple of uh, stragglers here. So we've got everything is kind of double stacked here, projecting some zones of control. Uh, these guys are up on a ridge, having a zone of control going down. So that blocks these units from just moving through here. They have to go and take this out, which is going to slow them down. Uh, and then the allies had the final uh, in they had the final impulse the uh, the, the uh, they went second on turn two uh, so they finished knocking out a couple extra units so so far four of these little piddly Italian units are dead um, used one of our replacement points to build this guy back up uh, this guy uh, took uh, took a step loss we had six to one odds in two of the combats that we did even with uh, the uh, air support that we were using and I rolled a four each time, and a four uh, on the six to one means the attacker loses a step, as well as the defender losing three and being forced to retreat. So um, unfortunately, I didn't get any of the good results where I, there's no attrition. So uh, even when you've got extremely good odds, you're still gonna take attrition in this. This is gonna be one of those um, kind of hefty games where you're gonna take a lot of losses. I think you have to be in the movement phase, if you're rolling around and you've got nine to one odds, uh, you can just overrun guys, but that's quite hard to do. Like, I'd have to do it on a, and it has to be like a single unit, and there can't be other zones of control um, next to them or anything like that. So it can be challenging to get that done, but that's how things stand at the end of December 1940. Uh, we're going to move into January 1941. Uh, we're going to roll, start rolling on the Axis fuel table so they can get more fuel. We've got some German units showing up. I think DAC shows up eventually, kicking around here somewhere, but we'll have uh, some German units rolling in. Uh, we do have interdiction. Uh, we've sent some of our, some of our air force, uh, and what this does is it sits on top of these units. These units can't use strategic movement to swing all the way up here, and if they do use fuel to, get, uh, to, to kind of use their maximum movement, their movement capacity is halved. So this guy's a one, this guy's a three. So, even, so it just kind of says it's not worth giving those guys fuel, basically. So that's where we stand uh, at the end of December. I'll see you at the end of January. Uh, so here's how things stand at the end of January 1941. Um, not a ton of movement. Uh, very, very slowly trucking up some of these um, Italian units. Uh, again, they've been under interdiction pretty much this whole time, so they're not making a lot of progress. We rolled well on the fuel, but we spent a bunch of it swinging a couple guys over here. Um, Commonwealth forces were blunted, trying to make this uh, make this attack over here. 
Yeah, because the odds uh, attacking up onto a ridge were not good. Um, and then, but what we had done is we'd swung these two units around here. Um, and uh, these are, let me just make sure, I got, we got the Australians and this is Australian division and an Indian division. So Australian 6th division, Indian 4th division, I believe is what those are. We're swinging those up around here and we were doing that to threaten this pass. So that f basically, the, and uh, the, uh, the allies went first. And so it kind of drew these guys out of Bardia to defend this because if the, these guys are able to swing in here early January, they're gonna cut these guys off from supply uh, and then they're all just going to trit out, basically. So they ha forces this movement here. Um, so, that we, but that was interesting. I was, but then this attack <laughs> kind of was blunted, took a couple step losses, and was kind of forced back. So, um, this is going to be a kind of a struggle to get through. So then I'm thinking I might just <laughs> swing these guys around this way um, even further, just to kind of put this pressure on. Uh, and I don't know, we'll, we'll kind of see what happens there. Spent a few replacement points, but uh, it's been kind of a wash because the, the attacking, this was at one-to-one -one odds, it was very bad. Um, so we've lost a few units to attrition there. Um, the, uh, the Germans, well, the Axis, the Italians rolled uh, one replacement point, um, but then we rolled to bring them in f to the port of Benghazi, uh, and we rolled a five, so they were delayed. Uh, so they didn't actually come in, which was unfortunate. Um, oh, let's see. Oh, they did come in in that final turn. I forgot to move them. So they were delayed. They were delayed coming in in this turn, but then in this turn they would have come on and they could have moved. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's as far as they could have gone. Um, that was just funny that like I, I rolled like the only thing that <laughs> would have delayed them basically. So uh, that's how things stand. Uh, kind of a little bit of a, a, a log jam over here, um, but uh, the, the Italian reinforcements are somewhat dried up at the moment. You want to keep the drip drip of guys coming in. However, we've got uh, a big stack of Italian units uh, popping up here, uh, which are going to show up, and there's a, the German uh, Africa Corps is going to show up now. Um, but again, those are coming all the way um, from Tripoli, so they've got a long ways to truck up here, and they've got to get some fuel to be able to do it. Uh, but that's where things stand. What we'll do is we'll kind of see you at the end of uh, at the end of February 1941. Uh, so here we are at the uh, end of February 1941. Uh, just kind of going into March 1941. You haven't started March yet. Uh, so this is six turns into the 50 turn game, uh, and things were very hairy for a moment. Um, you might see some additions here. I put out my tiddlywinks. This is for um, uh, allied control of these uh, cities or settlements and access control because when I had, I put some guys under interdiction and that was too far away from the closest city and I had messed that rule up. So I put these out as a mnemonic. So it didn't make that much of a difference because they, it just prevented them from using strategic movement. I wasn't going to do it anyway because I didn't want to use the fuel for it. So I, it didn't break the game, but I put these out to remind myself to be a bit more careful about that. Uh, but uh, a lot of stuff's happened here in February. Um, we had this kind of swing maneuver around uh, to, to cut off the Italian units here. And um, we were... <laughs> I put them out of supply, but they don't check their supply until the end of their turn. And so then the Germans went, well, the Axis went, and the Germans popped onto the board. So Rommel with his deck, come on, and then I got another unit here. Uh, well, let's get yeah, this unit here. Of, I think it's 21st Panzer Division, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, those two units come on, they got 10 movement, spend that fuel. They drive all the way up here, pick up a couple of Italians, uh, and they had me sandwiched, so I was going to be out of supply, which was going to be bad. They did an attack, and I didn't have anywhere to retreat, so it would have eliminated these two units. So that's where we used our tactical advantage, which the, the Allies had. They used it, they re-rolled the attack, uh, and the Germans failed uh, in that second attack, so that was very, very useful. So the odds were actually really bad. Um, the Germans 
were attacking at the 1 to 2 odds and just praying for a 4-5. Uh, they were praying for, like, a, a 5, so that they would be forced to retreat and it would eliminate them, and that's what they had rolled. Uh, so I'm like, oh, you would... You know, so we played the tactical advantage, they re-rolled that into... Um, what I, I think they re-rolled into a three. So the attacker just had to retreat, so they retreated, at which point um, all of these Italian units were out of supply, they all degraded at the end of the turn, um, at which point then in the second half of February, the Allies just mopped them up in overruns, because there was like one strength here and two strength here, and this was just mopped up an overrun, and then this had to be done in the attack phase because I didn't have enough in one single stack. Uh, but it was, like, over 9 to 1 odds, and so you just delete the units at that point. It's not even... you don't even, like, do the attacks or anything like that. Um, so they consolidated this position, swung a few extra units around this way to try and kind of cut these guys off here. Uh, and the Germans... well, the Axis got, got something to think about here. They do have some very strong reinforcements coming in. Uh, and we were able to truck in uh, this uh, Italian uh, armoured unit as well, which they're sitting in Tobruk, but I'm like, I don't want to sit in Tobruk and be cut off. So I, I, we, might, we might be pulling back to keep ourselves in supply, and, and, then, and then once we've got our supply lines a bit more secure, really perform some attacks and, and start killing units, because um, cutting through all of this... Our units have a lot of movement, uh, the, the Axis units have a lot of movement, so that's two, five, and three attack factors, that's, that's their best stack. And they can move a lot, but a lot of these units, you know, two strength, one strength, one strength, there's some replacements under there, like, it's not a lot of strong things, but we've got some of these four units coming up, four units coming up, uh, so the, slowly these are trickling in, and there's more on the way, but... Uh, that, that, that's a little bit tenuous uh, to see kind of what's going on there. Um, uh, yeah, so that's kind of where we stand at the moment. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to... Oh yeah, I think that was everything that was interesting at least. Uh, what we'll do is we'll see you at the end of March. So here we are at the end of March 1941. Um, we just completed turn seven and eight, and we had some movements, but not not a ton. Uh, it was a case of trying to encircle these German and Italian units here. <clears throat> but the way that the supply rules work, if you are in or one hex away from a controlled um, city or uh, kind of urban area, you're always within supply. So it was um, you're getting supplies from the sea, basically, or kind of uh, local supplies. So it was impossible to kill them off through attrition, but I wanted to cut them off from advancing, and uh, we smashed one of the very weak stacks that only had like three combat factors in it. Um, this stack with Rommel, who is stuck in Tobruk at the moment, um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, he's in a fort, Fortress Tobruk, it's doubled, so he's a 20 defense, so we are not ready to attack that yet. But it's gonna take us a long time to build up forces to feel anything other than one-to-one -to, -one to get into there. And the problem is, is that that, that delay is co going to cause a build-up of Axis forces for a second wave, um, which I think is what I'm doing. I had, a, I had this attack force that came in. They were blunted. They did a lot of damage. Uh, they attrited a lot of units. Uh, There's a lot of flipped-over units here, but it was a lot of attacking at one-to-one -one or two-to-one, -one, which isn't great odds in this one. Um, and so... I've kind of made a, an executive decision to stop this dribble of units and to kind of consolidate a big force of units. We're going to allow probably the Allies to come a bit further or to do what they want until we've got a really good sizable force upon which they will break is, is kind of the hope. Um, whether we do that down here at El Alhela or up at Benghazi, you don't want to get your supply routes cut and things like that if Benghazi can't uh, trace back this way. So I'm going to kind of figure out what I want to do with that. But I think that's more of what historically happened. We kind of got all the way over here, and then they stopped. And then, you yeah, know, they busted and started pushing this way. But uh, it's... Uh, the drib-drabs of Axis units is not working. Um, I thought they might be slightly more effective, but it's not the case. We are going to have to... Uh, 
as the Allies, uh, they're going to have to start withdrawing a couple of units here and there to go, you know, they go over and fight in Greece and in Crete and things like that. But uh, so far, whilst this looks precarious for Rommel, it's not. Um, he's very safe in there because they ignore retreat results. They're just going to take a little bit of attrition here and there, but they can't be out of supply. So it'll either hold up everyone long enough for a relieving force to come, hopefully, or, you know, so, yeah, it's hard to say. <laughs> hard to say what's going to happen here. Um, the uh, We did roll really well as the Allies in one of the attacks, uh, and so the Germans had to, or the Axis forces had to use the tactical advantage um, in turn 7 to, uh, to force a re-roll that was much more favourable to them, um, which kind of dragged this out uh, a little bit more, but... So far, not a whole lot's changing. It's, this is very slow and was very congested with ZOCs from the little German uh, and Italian stack that was there. Uh, this stack doesn't project ZOCs out of Tobruk. They're behind their fortifications, right? So we kind of got more, more freedom to kind of swing around here, but we cannot leave these guys there because he'll just sit on this road. If we move everyone past, he just sits on the road and cuts the supply line and everyone dies. So we have to deal with this. It's, there's no way around that. Uh, unfortunately, and whether that's leaving a bunch of guys surrounding him, which is risky, or because then you're, you're sending a much inferior force up, or if we just go all in and gamble, because this is, at best, we're going to get one-to-one -one results, probably, um, and see kind of see what happens there. But uh, all, all these dribbles of units are coming in. We, did, we rolled really poorly on the axis, Fuel and reinforcements track, uh, we actually rolled, uh, so we're still in this segment here, a roll of four, so we didn't get any replacements, and we only got three fuel, which we used to truck some units up, which ended up not doing what I wanted it to do. So that was unfortunate, but uh, that was the end of March 1941. We'll see you at the end of April. So here we are at the end of turn 10, which is the end of April 1941. Um, we had... Uh, so there's a couple of interesting bits and pieces that happened. Um, tried a couple of times to attack this stack. We inflicted one step loss, and then uh, the Allies just bounced off the last one. Um, we've sent this kind of small poultry force over here just to kind of pick up some of these uh, and to sit in this ridge terrain here. Um, just to what that's going to do. That's that's going to. Just put this threat here, I'm not ready to move into Benghazi or do any attacks there or anything quite yet. Um, but that'll force these Axis forces to be honest. Um, which you can see they're just building up and bringing more in. I'm trying to build a, a sizable force to start kind of counter-attacking here. But it, it, it'll stop them from just, you know, if they get a bunch of fuel, just like running across the desert here. Uh, using strategic movement and 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 doing anything uh, kind of cheeky like that because they they'll either have to deal with this because uh, this can cause havoc if they if they kind of swing past each other but uh, you know just puts a little bit of pressure there or at least something for the axis to think about um, but you know this is very tenuous they, these guys could get cut off fairly easily but it's like it's almost like a bait do I want to Go and cut these guys off and, and att attack those guys, which then leaves these guys with more time to do this. Or do we, you know, wait for these guys to arrive, chuck tr tr a bunch of fuel up, and then start swinging around as quickly as possible? But once again, because of the supply, these guys are just sat here uh, doing doing a good job, um, and so you know, it's. All of this stuff around here, it's still one-to-one -one odds, so it's absolutely brutal. I think once I get uh, maybe one more reinforcement or can get this guy in, and maybe if I can get some air support, which my air support's pretty much dried up at the moment, um, we, we could give it a go. I've also, the Germans had to see the tactical advantage because um, they had to use a re-roll in, in turn 10. Um, so... We'll, we'll kind of see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, it's we don't have a lot of uh, allied units coming in. Uh, it, during turn uh, 
nine, we got one unit, 10, we didn't get anything. 11, we're gonna get some, uh, we're gonna get some replacements coming in and stuff, but uh, I don't, they're not that necessary at the moment, but they're gonna take long enough to come uh, along the board where they probably will be at that point. So and that's kind of where things stand at this point. I'm um, hoping that this force gets built up and we can start making some, some good progress here. Um, it might be, you know, <laughs> might be a little bit before that happens, but that's where we're at at the end of turn 10. So here we are at the end of May 1941. Um, look, I feel like a lot of action kind of happened, a lot of movement happened at least. But um, once again, my terrible dice rolling comes into play here. So um, the, uh, the turns 11 and 12 was Allied Axis, Allied Axis is the order in which that happened. So uh, the Allies, uh, they, uh, they tried to do an attack on Tobruk. Um, I think they inflicted one step loss, but they took um, a couple themselves and were also repulsed. As you can see, they kind of had to spread out. Uh, as the attacker had to retreat there. Um, so that wasn't great, but we kind of inflicted a loss. It was okay. Uh, but unfortunately for the Allies, the Axis rolled a 1 uh, on this uh, replacement and fuel chart. And on this chart, low numbers are good. So they got one Italian replacement, one German replacement, and they got nine fuel, which you can see we spent already. But as such, they were able to land one Italian replacement here, which they rolled and were successful. So an infantry replacement was able to bring this back up to full strength. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about this here in a second. Um, the, uh, the German... The, the, they also got a German replacement that landed in Benghazi, but there's, nothing needs replacing, so we just landed it here to keep it safe behind these front lines as we brought all this stuff up. Uh, the Allies then, kind of on, on turn 12, basically just consolidated their forces. I had a ton of replacements, so all the guys who had taken attrition, we, we kind of built them back up, so they didn't really do anything. Um, these guys were kind of over here, I don't really know, trying to threaten or kind of bait forces. This was too much of a threat coming across for them to get cut, so they retreated. I tried to keep them... I tried to get them to swing all the way back down here, but they didn't have enough movement for that because they were um, being harassed by Stukas. And so um, they ended up just having to kind of retreat this way, and we were just like, well, we're just going to gamble uh, and, and, and roll, roll some dice here. Uh, and then on, on this, so on turn 12, that's kind of, they just kind of pulled back and we reinforced a little bit. But then the, the, in turn 12, the, the Italians got a uh, an armor replacement, which would be used for this unit to go from a 3 to a 5, which was a huge boon, but of course I rolled a 5, so the, sh the shipping is delayed uh, as, the, uh, as those reinforcements are harassed by the, uh, the Royal Naval Mediterranean <laughs> Fleet, so those don't show, didn't show up. Uh, they'll, they'll potentially show up in turn 13, so of course my rolling failed me there. Uh, and then we spent basically all of our fuel trucking some guys across the desert, and we pushed up all these forces. You can see there's still a chain of forces coming, but this was, in theory, decent enough. They all pushed out here, uh, and we attacked this guy here with... St we had some Stuka, so we were at two to one odds, and like an idiot, I rolled, a f uh, I rolled a four, and I thought to myself, come on, man, that's the only thing that I didn't want to do. So I, I spent the tactical advantage to re-roll that, and of course, I rolled it into a two, which was the only much worse result, basically. So I, I'm, I, I can't help but despair at my dice rolling that is just hosing uh, one side of this uh, game right now. So I, I hope it's still interesting. I can't kind of get out of my own dice rolling's way because as things stand, um, things, this was, that was not good. Losing two step losses here was not good. We wanted to attack these guys, maybe destroy them, push them back a little bit, swing these guys in to cut them off. Now, we've got some dribs and drabs coming in, which isn't great. 
these guys are going to consolidate and try to attack Tobruk one more time, hopefully before these uh, replacements show up. Uh, that would be a huge benefit uh, if they can really whittle that down, because at the moment, these guys are still defending. They're defending one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're defending at a 16, because that's doubled. So I'm still... A, if I was to attack, that would be my first attack against them at two to one odds at the moment, which is much better than one to one. Still not great, but if you can keep whittling them down, you might be able to get to three to one and start eliminating those and then kind of really push on uh, with the bulk of our forces. But instead, this is taking a lot of time and this is a lot of encroaching forces to kind of stymie things. This is gonna be uh, kind of a bloodbath uh, at this point, but that's how things stand at the end of May and we will see you at the end of June 1941. So here we are at the end of June, beginning of July. So we've just completed turns 13 and 14. And uh, as you can see, uh, things have <laughs> fallen apart somewhat for the Allies. Um, th so beginning of turn 13, um, the, uh, the Axis forces rolled uh, and they rolled really well so that they would have the initiative. So they did go first, and those armored reinforcements that were delayed at sea did arrive, and so they were able to reinforce uh, this area at armored division uh, at Tobruk. So as such, the, the defensive factors really escalated here. Um, the Allies were able to regroup, uh, but the problem was is that these forces that were out here, they, they got encircled um, and then th an attack was performed. There was nowhere for them to retreat so that they were fully eliminated. That was kind of a nightmare. And then we, uh, they, they then pushed everything back down this way. Uh, so lots of Germans pushing this way. Th th there was an, an, a kind of an exchange here where they had to kind of retreat a little bit. Uh, as did some allied forces. They uh, surrounded Tobruk one more time for, for another attack. They rolled on two to one odds. Uh, and, we rolled a, and we rolled a four or a two to one. So we just lost stuff and nothing else happened. It was just nightmare rolling. Uh, so that was very unfortunate. So as things stand, this is fairly precarious. We've got a lot of um, reduced units here. We do have a bunch of replacements coming, but when you receive replacements, you can't kind of move an attack. So um, we kind of got to try to rush these guys up, repair everyone, defend this attack, and, and you know, the, the sallying forth of these guys out of Tobruk as well, which is probably gonna happen. Uh, we've had to withdraw a few units again off to, off to Crete and Greece, so. July is gonna be interesting. Um, uh, we're gonna see how things go. The other, the other aspect of this is we've had a lot of um, uh, German air power and almost no RAF power. And we're we're looking at it's a little it's reduced German air power, but we we're not getting any RAF support for, for at least uh, you know until 1942 basically. So uh, things are looking uh, kind of messy. We might be we might be making a kind of a slow retreat this way as, as things happen. So uh, lots of action going on, and uh, we'll see at the end of July. So here we are at the end of. Um July 1941, we've just completed turn 16, and uh, Allies are having something of a shocker at the moment. Uh, it's just going very poorly, and a big part of that is due to uh, the Axis forces have been regularly winning initiative, or what has happened is, is that they've been getting the old double turn. So in a month, where you only get your kind of replacements and your fuel at the beginning of a month, so you'll get it in turn 15 and not in turn 16, you know, the Allies are going, the Axis are weathering the storm, and then the Axis are going, getting all their replacements and fuel, doing a turn, and then for the subsequent turn in turn 16, they're rolling and winning that initiative, so they get a double turn, which is extremely strong. Um, and so, in this instance, they were able to chug up a lot of forces here, and um, bring in some replacements landed, the ones that were delayed in Benghazi arrived, so those have come to kind of back everything up. 
um, moved in, did a couple of attacks, eliminated some units that were fairly weak, but and they isolated a few of them. Uh, but that they've basically relieved the siege of Tobruk at this point, which was unfortunate for the ac for the Allies because they had done finally a real good job of getting that whittled down and were probably about to make some progress. They could still, um, if they want to, it's probably a fairly risky gamble at this point. If the Allies win the initiative, they could still charge in here and maybe try to do an attack. But the way that this game works is that if we have units in this hex, not only, like, attacking a fortress, which Tobruk is, is optional, but you have to attack every defender that you're adjacent to. So we would have to attack this stack here as well, which two, four, five, six, seven, seven strength in some ridges, double, you don't, you don't want to go up against that. So you might take this out, but you're going to sacrifice something to kind of defend against that, and then <laughs> got to tackle that coming this way as well. And so they took kind of a beating, basically, and the Allies at this point basically spent the whole turn um, rebuilding units and getting back up to strength, but when you do that, you can't move and attack, so a lot of being static and kind of trying to reform here. Now, we picked up some minefields, but you can't place a minefield unless you vacate a space, and again, they were kind of stuck because they were replacing units. Potentially, as we move, <laughs> maybe withdraw a little bit, um, we will put some minefields out because we're not getting a, a whole, we're getting some reinforcements, but not a whole lot. You know, it's not till May of 1942 when you start getting big stacks of units back in. So uh, allies might well be on the defensive for a while on this one because they just couldn't quite finish this off and make the progress that they needed to where they could make a stand elsewhere. So that's, uh, that's how things look at the end of uh, July. We'll see you in August. So here we are at the uh, end of August, uh, just completed turn 18. Uh, not a ton of movement and action in this one. Um, it was more a case of uh, some consolidations and a couple of little combats. Um, the Germans... So th the Allies basically spent all of their replacement points, they don't have any more on a board currently. Uh, there, there was like kind of a few stacks kicking around um, that they've been holding on to. So I think all of these are at least at reasonable strength at the moment. Um, but they basically just kind of sat there and did that. And then um, it, and then formed this line over the course of the over the course of the two turns. Um, the Germans moved up, had a couple of uh, had a couple of turns. A couple of different attacks, but mostly just bounced off of things, and so uh, we just spent a lot of replacements to get things kind of back up. Um, these little reinforcements that were trying to come into Tobruk were delayed, unfortunately. Once again, I keep rolling fours and fives on that. Luckily, I haven't rolled a six that would just sink them, basically. Um, and then we moved up uh, these two. These are um, 88 millimeter batteries. Uh, we move both of those up to sit here because they have a three defensive strength. So uh, moving through those is going to be very difficult. You'd have to outflank them to do anything meaningful. But c basically, this kind of ended as kind of a stalemate whilst we all could just kind of regroup and re get some strength together. These Italian units that were getting battered around um, kind of sat here pathetically in the back waiting for some replacements. They, they're no good to anyone at the moment, but a lot of German replacements, so the German can take a lot of attrition here if they would did decide to, to make a big push here, but this uh, it's been a lot of kind of butting heads and, and smashing each other, but this was a month of consolidating positions and gaining strength again, uh, ready for kind of what happens next. So that was August, see you at the end of September. So here we are. We were at the uh, end of September, just completed turn 20. So we're nearing the halfway point of this game. <laughs> um, uh, a, a, good, a good amount of action. So we'd had, we'd had this uh, line formed up here of, of, uh, of allied units. And uh, we uh, kind of rearranged some of those. A couple of them swang around here to, to do um, some attacks, which were... Uh, 
reasonably successful, whittling down some of these smaller um, German units. They did leave back some mines so that I could hold this line with fewer troops, and so it would be much harder to gang up and surround these, just in case the Axis forces got any funny ideas. Then we've got here um, some reinforcements and replacements that swang all the way up, but haven't been able to kind of make any effects or kind of do anything there. Uh, the Germans were able to bring in some, uh, I think they brought in a reinforcement maybe here. Um, you know, the single Italian unit swinging its way up here. Uh, we did have a German counterattack this way. They inflicted two losses on this stack uh, and took one loss themselves, and both sides had to retreat, so just kind of separated. So there's this big gap here, but um, losses for the Axis forces, we can replace a few. Um, we might get some more coming in, but. Uh, Things have kind of evened themselves out a little bit more. These were very strong stacks from from the uh, from the Commonwealth forces, but uh, they've been weakened. But so have so have the Axis forces. So still a lot of um, kind of tension and friction going on here. Uh, not a ton of movement, uh, and I still there's not enough units to make us around here to start messing around with supply. We're not quite there yet. So I think there's just going to be more more combat coming in. Uh, still no, uh, in October there still won't be any um, RAF support coming in. That'll start in November, we'll get some RAF support finally. But uh, that's where we're at uh, at the end of turn 20, uh, we will see at the end of November. So here we are at the end of October, I know I said November, but I meant October. Uh, we just completed turn 22. Um, so, well, biggest action, as you can see, is Tobruk finally fell. Um, with the reshuffling of units that had happened, um, there was only a Flak 88 and like a single um, CAV unit that were in there. I think it's Armoured CAV, maybe Recon, that were in there. So there were four strength points, which is double to eight. Um, but I had, uh, I was able to kind of swing everyone around and get two to one. So they took two damage, which is all that they had in there. And we took one and had to kind of retreat everyone back uh, a little bit. So that, that, that kind of sorted that out. And that was done because I've been reshuffling some units here, so we had a, a really strong line, but when these guys had had to retreat from some combats before, it left them exposed, so that was unfortunate and I hadn't really considered that. Um, these, these guys pulled back, laid a minefield uh, to kind of really trap and slow this down or to inflict some wounds. Probably they're going to have to swing out this way, but that takes a lot longer because traveling across all these ridges just takes time and slows you down. Uh, but this is a huge, huge win for the Allies, because you can bring in, um, now it's a die roll, but you can bring in your um, reinforcements, you can bring in um, replacements here, instead of over at Alexandria, where they have to take a full turn and they get here, then you can use them pretty easily, but you can be used immediately as opposed to like a, a turn later, effectively. So. Hopefully that's a really big deal, and it also denies um, this to the Axis, which is also very important. They've been able to feed in reinforcements, which kept this strong, so now we're kind of at a point where we might be able to make some real progress. Uh, we had also, let me remove this, we'd swung these units over, over here, um, these two units, so we got the New Zealand Division, uh, 2nd New Zealand Division, and 5th Indian Division, uh, that's a little bit <laughs> worse for wear. They were, they were a bit stronger beforehand. They had in, circled around here uh, to El uh, Mahili. And oh, let's get them the right way around. We just had them. Uh, and they did that because you can be in an urban area, like a little village or town, or one space away from one that you control and still be in supply. I was thinking about trying to run them across here, um, but where the DAC is placed with Rommel, um, they couldn't have made it in two turns and started cutting all of this supply. It would have taken them three, and the turn where they were out in the desert, they would have taken a lot of damage, and they would have been effectively worthless by the time they got out here. So instead, they just kind of hopped over here. Um, they were pincered by some Italian units that came down here in this stack here. Um, they kind of bounced off each other. Um, we, took a, we took a loss, they took a loss, kind of an exchange. Um, and the, the, this stack then spent a turn kind of reconstituting some of their units with these replacements here. 
um, and these all these Italian units swung back to protect Benghazi um, because I think we're <laughs> somewhat more on the defensive as the Axis now. They do still have one minefield left, um, and they can always call for, I think it's one more set of minefields, one counter for each uh, can be pulled in this game. Uh, so we'll see kind of what we choose to do with that, if anything. But uh, at the moment, this is kind of a log jam. Once these guys can break out and with a few more reinforcements, uh, we'll start hopefully to see a bit more progress coming on here because the, uh, the Axis reinforcements have pretty much dried up. Um, they've got this... Uh, Nice Italian armored unit popping up here in the end of December. And then it ain't until like the uh, end of 1942 that they're getting anything that's worthwhile. Almost everything else is allied replacements and reinforcements. Uh, we did have to withdraw. Um, I think it was the uh, Australian 9th Division. Those guys had to be withdrawn, which is unfortunate because they were a very strong unit. Uh, but those are coming on in t on turn 38. So those are coming back like you know, 10 15 turns later, which is uh, not great, but we, I think we're, we've made some good progress. If we can get some consolidation, maybe a few replacements coming in, uh, I think we'll be in some good shape as the allies here to make a final push. And the rule of the game is, is that if you can eliminate every single Axis unit on the board, uh, it's an insta-win victory. Uh, if not, the, uh, that, the Axis is trying to force their way and get units past Alexandria and keep them in supply for a couple of turns. Very, very difficult. Um, or, and I think they also have to like control Tobruk uh, at, during turn 50, or the allies might have to. Tobruk control is extremely important for, for either side. So, uh, kind of a wacky, crazy turn that went on there. Um, lots of rolling on one-to-one -one tables and two-to-one -one tables and kind of throwing up a prayer and seeing what happened. Uh, was reasonably successful here. Uh, here was kind of an exchange, so. Uh, we'll see how this plays out, and we'll see you at the end of November. So here we are at the end of November, and it was an interesting month, is what I would say. Um, the fuel dried up very quickly um, for, the, for the Axis. Um, weren't able to make a whole lot of anything because I've been rolling very poorly. So we're currently on this D segment of the table, and I've been rolling like uh, fours and fives, so just nothing's coming on for them. Uh, hilariously though, uh, I did try to bring in this allied reinforcement here, and of course I rolled a six, which means it's sunk and it loses a step, but it's a one step unit, so it died. So that was, ju I did that and was like, well, I'm not risking bringing on the replacements. So I did still drive the replacements all the way up here, uh, and then, they, and that was, so it was turn 23, and then turn 24, they were able to kind of filter out. Some of them are still kind of stuck here, but uh, <laughs> of course, you capture Tilbrook, and then it just goes horribly. Uh, I just thought that was quite funny. Um, Axis performing a strategic withdrawal. Uh, dropped a couple extra minefields, pulled back this way, and we did that because these two roads converge here, and it will be much harder to get these guys out of here because their defense is doubled because they're on this ridge. Um, that defense doubling on a ridge is negated if you have attacking units on the plateau as well. Um, but to be able to swing all the way around here, if it looks like the Allies are doing that, they'll just pull back and defend somewhere else. But this, if they were going to make this charge up the road, which a couple of units might end up doing that, this is a nice defensive position for them. Uh, these guys had run down here, uh, and they were chased by... Uh, Rommel. However, Rommel's been under hurricane uh, interdiction, which means he couldn't move. He's got half movement, plus the fuel's dried up, so he couldn't move very far at all, couldn't use any strategic movement, so that was a huge boon. <laughs> and yet, uh, he was, he was uh, I think he was in this space and we had him surrounded, uh, and we did an attack, and it was just the worst. Uh, these guys came here, and these guys all kind of drove out into the desert, and we had him kind of dead to rights, but uh, he rolled, I think we were on a two to one table and uh, we rolled, uh, it was, uh, I think it was, this ended up being this result here, where we took two losses and retreated and he had to take one loss. It was, no, it was a roll of three. Oh, they had to take two and retreat. So he took a couple step losses uh, on the, uh, 
on this German division, 90th division. So that was nice, but they retreated a space. We took damage and had to retreat as well. And it was like, oh, just, I just can't get a coup de gras on these guys. So the, a lot of frustration back and forth. We've taken these couple of supply points. These guys are in supply here. These guys uh, are not more than one space away. So they're tracing supply back to this road and all the way back here. But um, we do one, two, three, four, five, six. We do threaten this supply line. So it, it's gonna force the Axis um, to be honest. However, uh, once again, these guys are under interdiction. So even if they get fuel, uh, there'll be half movement, which is like a three or a five. Uh, and so they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. And hopefully that's gonna be enough where we can kind of, if we can cut the supply. Now, obviously these guys are gonna swing around and defend that. Um, but depends on who who kind of goes first in that instance uh, as to what we uh, what we get going on because again the axis aren't getting reinforced until the end of December so if we can cut supply in the first turn if the allies go first they'll have to react to that otherwise they'll start taking step losses and if we can take a step loss on everyone on the board that would be huge before uh, these tanks start trucking in and kind of mopping up some of our maybe less strong forces, but the only ones that could make it. So lots of interesting things to, to, to kind of discuss and we'll uh, see you at the end of December, 1941. So here we are at the end of December and at the end of 1941. Um, things have kind of blown wide open. Uh, a lot of kind of retreating and repositioning for the Axis forces uh, they did go first uh, in the uh, first part of December in turn 25, they went first. So they were able to consolidate this position um, and kind of protect this road. There was only one hex that they, the Allies could have gotten onto. Um, so they went and protected that, but then they made very good use of their um, Stuka dive bombers for interdiction. As you can see, not a whole lot of progress has been made. Partly that's to do with I've been bringing up replacements, and when you get replaced, you can't move that turn. But also, these all had half movement from the interdiction. At least a, a lot of the stacks did. So they haven't made a lot of progress, and so it was able um, in the second part of December for them to roll on these tanks. Uh, they rolled really. Um, they rolled four um, fuel uh, and a couple of replacements. They rolled kind of well. They rolled a two on this chart here. Uh, so that you know, it was better than a sharp stick in the eye, at least. Uh, so they were able to bring everything on, consolidate this position. So this is actually relatively strong. So we've got a three defense, four fives, kind of out in the open, not doing anything. But we've got these Italians that have got an eight attack and defense there as well. A uh, lot of stalemating here, trying to swing the Australian 7th Division up to meet up with them. Uh, we did get some uh, replacements for these guys. So these are at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten now. And if I was to attack them, they're doubled in this ridge terrain. So that's a fairly formidable defensive stack. Um, so this is where we're talking about trying to cut supply lines and all that kind of thing. So uh, I think that it might be easier to do this and then attrit some of this stuff. Um, but again, it's the rule of if you're in one of these little tiddlywink areas or one space away, you're always in supply. So what that does is it means that, yeah, these guys aren't gonna take attrition, but they're also kind of stuck with they are. As soon as they start moving out, unless they start capturing towns on the way, which is quite slow, um, they're not going anywhere. Um, so it's an in interesting choices faced by the Axis here, but I'm not saying it doesn't look good, but uh, if things go poorly for them in a couple of combats, they'll look very bad very quickly, I believe. Once again, had to withdraw uh, another allied unit. We've got a couple dribs and drabs coming in. If we can't cut, you know, if we can't kind of finish them off here soon, uh, when it comes to, you know, the summer of 1942, we have a lot of extra units coming on uh, that will uh, kind of bolster our forces and kind of finish the job before the allies get any major reinforcements, uh, before the Axis get any major reinforcements coming in. Uh, towards the late summer, early autumn of 1942. So that's where things stand at the close of the year. Uh, we'll see you at the end of January 1942. Just concluded turn 28, which was January 1942. Um, as you can see, we were able to, it, you know, a lot of stuff happened, but generally speaking, 
the axis, they went first, uh, left a little bit of a garrison, but it wasn't worth uh, messing around with. Uh, so most of the forces, with PS, we rolled a six on the segment E fuel and reinforcements table, so we got nothing. Um, as such, couldn't really do a whole lot. So the little movement we did have, we consolidated forces into this line. Uh, we did have, I think there was a replacement. Uh, and then we had these ones that came in last turn that are just kind of kicking around, waiting to... Here, yeah, I should have moved them up. They should be here. I forgot to move them. I didn't see them. Um, those came in in uh, December. But uh, the, the, these guys are just making a defensive line and they've you know, all are joining. So a lot of positioning, consolidation of forces. Benghazi fell. Wasn't really held by anything uh, that was meaningful, at least anyway. Kind of slowed them down. But again, it's the, the actors have been delaying, delaying because they've had the... Um, half movement dive bomber interdiction which has really slowed this down so only now are we vaguely in, in a formation where we could do something i think if the allies gain the initiative in february we'll we'll do an all-out assault and see what we can do um kind of risky because we did um uh in january the second half of january we had to remove a couple units one of them was the the australians that were holding tobruk but this new zealand division uh was very strong it was sat here uh, having to remove that and consolidate forces that really didn't help any but uh if in february yeah we don't have any RAF support either so that's not great but we'll we'll bring in um We'll bring in this p division, which that'll be nice. Also, we, we tried to bring in the 201st Royal Guards and uh, just, I rolled delayed shipping twice. They just can't, yeah, they're stuck in the med, can't, can't even land, unfortunately, which is funny because if I'd have driven them on, they'd be kind of kicking around here by now. But uh, that's kind of how things stand, very tense. Um, and it'll be kind of a, if the Allies get the initiative, kind of an all-out assault. If the Germans do, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do, uh, whether it's worth trying to move this stack up with some air support and pick off a couple of guys and weaken them. Uh, we'll see what happens. So I'll see you at the end of February 1942. So uh, here's a look at the end of February 1942, beginning going into March. Um, some hilariously funny and very me things happened. Uh, so I've rolled like three times to get this guy back onto the board and of course I rolled a six and he's dead, he sunk. So that was just ridiculous. Um, a bunch of my replacements didn't make it on either as well, I kept rolling uh, very poorly for those. Um, the uh, the Germans launched a tiny counterattack with Rommel on his stack that did a couple, a couple points of damage so those guys retreated uh, and then we swung in, we attacked the two stacks that were here uh, and we rolled very well. Um, we we rolled, uh, basically just did some losses on them. And then we had the double turn. So it went uh, Axis, Allies, Allies, Axis from 29 to 30 turns. So I'm not sure how <laughs> much I like that. I don't think I would do that in the future because the double turns are very, very, very strong. Uh, and so uh, what happened was, is that, you know, we, we kind of, bounced off each other a little bit, uh, did, did some damage, uh, but then the Allies were able to swing in and isolate and attack just two of the stacks instead of all three. Um, did a bunch of damage, forced some retreats, and then they were able to attack with three to one odds on Rommel stack, and I rolled a six, uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the Germans spent the tack advantage and I re-rolled my six into a six and eliminated that stack because uh, there wasn't a whole lot left after they'd taken some uh, some losses in the in the first half of February, uh, and then we kind of bounced off of the other stack a little bit. We've done some damage to it, um, so really they've got these two strong units that kind of bounced off here. Uh, so I think at this point I'm actually probably going to call the game uh, because we've got replacements coming in, going to strengthen all this stuff. The, the Axis have fuel, but they got nothing else. Uh, and we're about to get in a very large wave uh, of, of supporting forces. And this, is, this isn't going anywhere. Uh, and with Rommel dead, 
they they now lose the the bonus that they were getting uh, on their die roll. So normally for initiative you roll a die, and on a, on a one through four it is um, allied initiative first. On a five through six it's axis initiative first, and on a seven plus it's axis choice. And that's important because Rommel, if he's on the board, gives you a plus one to that die roll. So it's more of a 50-50 um, when he's on the board and I was rolling it, you know. So they're going to lose that, so they're going to be very much on the back foot. And I, <laughs> just mopping this up, I don't think that's going to be particularly interesting to watch. But um, I think I'm going to call it here. I've been playing, this is, I've, I've probably played this for, what I would say is, some turns are quicker than others, but, and I'm going kind of back and forth, probably about 10 minutes a turn. So I've probably been playing this for, you know, four, five, six hours off and on. But if you went the whole thing, is 10 minutes a turn realistic? Maybe, you know, it's five minutes for the Allied side, five minutes for the for the Axis side. That's not unreasonable uh, for what you're looking at. Pretty easy to solo, so I, I hope you've enjoyed this journey, uh, come along with me here in the, in the desert, uh, playing the African campaign designer signature second edition from Compass Games. Uh, appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.